It is now time for a member's statements. I, re I recognize the member for Nickel Belt. Thank you, Speaker. Today, I want to ask this government one more time to cancel the company's creditor arrangements that Laurentian University has fallen into. This process does one thing. It determines how many cents on the dollars that creditors will get. But the government can see that the assets of Laurentian University is way more than that. It is the bilingual mandate. It is the three culture. It is the oldest indigenous university program in our province. Can you not see that what my com community is losing because of this government inaction? Students are missing out on their education, having to switch schools, switch their major, switch their entire career path. People are losing their jobs, their paychecks in the middle of a pandemic, throwing more families into crisis. Premier Ford, Minister Romano, vous pouvez arrêter ce carnage de ma community. You can stop this chaotic, this chaos in my community today. You have to respond to your, to your duties to the Francophone community. The Francophone community deserves to have programs in French in Northern Ontario. Each program offered in French, in political science, economic, history, is a fruit of many years of labor so that they can have access to it. And the government refuses to do anything, refuses to say anything, even though 40 programs in French are disappearing and people are losing their jobs. I'm ashamed. Yes, Other statements, the member for Sarnia Lampton. Thank you, Speaker. <clears throat> it's my honor to rise today and to pay a special tribute to the team of Lampton Public Health. Unfortunately, negative chatter and misinformation have led many in Sarnia Lampton to believe that our community is falling behind in vaccination efforts of other communities in the province. Nothing could be further from the truth. In fact, Public Health Ontario's latest surveillance report on COVID-19 uptake in Ontario reports that thanks to the tireless efforts of Lambton Public Health, the residents of Lambton County are receiving their vaccines at the sixth fastest rate of all 34 public health units in the province. Great. In southwestern Ontario, Lambton Public Health has administered more vaccines to residents than every other public health unit of a comparable size. Lambton Public Health <coughs> has also undertaken the important step of beginning to vaccinate <coughs> education and child care workers, faith leaders, first responders, border inspection officers, food manufacturer workers, and agricultural and farm workers. Mr. Speaker, I want to commend all of the staff of Lambton Public Health for the tremendous work they've done so far in delivering these life-saving vaccines to the people of Lambton County. Everyone in Lambton County owes a debt of gratitude to Lambton Public Health for the work they are doing. And I might add, we also have five new uh, pharmacies that are also administering vaccines as of this week. So on behalf of all the residents of Lambton County, I say thank you to everyone at Lambton Public Health for all your efforts over the last year. Thank you, Speaker. Let it go. Thank you. Member statements? Ready? Member for Tamiskaming Cochrane. Thank you, Speaker. I would like to take this opportunity to make the House aware of uh, the state of emergency that's been declared by the municipality of Black River Matheson. They uh, have, uh, when I talked to Mayor uh, Gilles Ladurette, they at that point had three cases of COVID in their municipal uh, workforce. And as a result, the entire workforce, uh, the entire public employees from the municipality of Black River Matheson are uh, uh, self-isolating. So uh, other contractors have stepped up to the plate to take over um, municipal duties, because as you know, in Northern Ontario, we've had, a, we've had a, a very warm spring, but we are still expecting snowstorms in Black River Madison. And to make, to add um, how uh, big an impact this could have, uh, there was an accident last Saturday on Highway 11 in, in Black River, Madison, that closed the highway for hours and hours and hours. So again, and this is the second Saturday in a row that that stretch of highway has been closed. So to the people of Black River, Madison, like hang in there, everyone's doing what they can. And um, uh, I'm, Mayor Ladurette is keeping us up to date and I, I made a commitment to him 
to keep the legislature up to date because at some point they might need further help. Thank you, Speaker. Thank you. Next, we have the member for Haldeman Norfolk. Thank you, Speaker. Across uh, farm country in Haldeman Norfolk, apart from soil temperature, soil moisture, weather forecasts, commodity markets, the availability of farm labor and local medical officer of health restrictions weigh heavily on labor intensive agriculture. Recently, 250 Norfolk County tractors rolled into town for a rally to express their collective frustration at some of the difficulties COVID-19 restrictions are causing for local farmers. The restriction of the movement of temporary foreign workers from Pearson International Airport to three workers per vehicle rather than together in a bus is one such example. This restriction and others, if I refer to uh, consultant Trish Fournier, is adding a cost of over $19,000 per farm worker to the 5,000 workers arriving in Haldeman, Norfolk. As announced in the Ontario budget, $10 million is available to farmers to purchase PPE, enhanced cleaning and disinfection, and redesign workstations to better protect workers. The funding will also help farmers who experience unexpected costs for short-term or temporary housing and transportation as a result of COVID-19 outbreaks. As well, increased flexibility has been built into the program to ensure that it can respond to the emerging issues and risk. Thank you, Speaker. <clears throat> thank you. The next member's statement, the member for Essex. Uh, thank you very much, Speaker. You know, this is a statement that I, I'd hoped to not have to make. Uh, I bring forward today, on behalf of my riding, the good people of Essex County, uh, the frustration and anger that, that has existed and continues to uh, permeate our region due to this government's uh, ineptitude when it comes to dealing with COVID-19. We are now in the third lockdown, one that certainly was preventable. You know, Speaker, when we're looking back, the first lockdown was, un was, was uh, unfortunate, but uh, certainly people understood. The second one was definitely unfortunate. The third one now is sheer negligence. We knew what to do. The answers were around us in other jurisdictions, around uh, cohorting, around protecting seniors in long-term care, around ensuring that smaller class sizes and proper ventilation were made, and supporting small businesses and supporting those workers that needed paid sick days. This government has done none of that, and here we are today in a third lockdown that has devastated the small business community in, in my area. We will probably never see some of the businesses that had a footprint on our main streets ever again. They've lost hope, and it's strictly, specifically, and solely due to the actions and inactions of this government. They are mad, Speaker. They are absolutely frustrated, and there continues to be a lack of help or any hope uh, coming from this government. I implore uh, the members of the government to enhance and support the small business uh, supports that are there, make sure the eligibility criteria is broadened, and deliver paid sick days for all the workers in this province of Ontario. Thank you. The next member statement, the member for Simcoe Gray. Uh, speaker, the Collingwood General Marine Hospital redevelopment is listed by Infrastructure Ontario in the pre-procurements phase, with an estimated cost between $200 and $499 million. We now know that a request for proposals is targeted for the fall of 2023 and a contract could be signed by 2024. I want to thank the Premier and the Minister of Health for making this happen. Speaker, members will know that a new Collingwood Hospital located at a central, easily accessible site on donated land is much preferred by residents of South Georgian Bay than a rebuild at the existing confined hospital location. I encourage residents to continue fighting for a brand new hospital on Poplar Side Road. I hope the government will keep an open mind. My constituents are looking forward to the new state-of-the-art hospital facilities they need and deserve and have long fought for. Thank you, Speaker. Thank you. Member statements. The member for Brantford. Brant. Thank you, Mr. Speaker, and good morning. I rise in the House today to highlight the efforts of Bite of Brant. Organized by the County of Brant Agricultural Awareness Committee, Bite of Brant is an opportunity for local elementary students in grade four through six to learn about the agri-food industry and the vital role it plays in our local food supply and economy. Bite of Brant is an initiative which began 26 years ago, and in the past, students would visit the Burford Fairgrounds to learn about farming. Last year, the event was canceled due to the pandemic, but this year, the organizing committee pivoted to a virtual event 
The free learning opportunity, run by countless volunteers, ran from April 6 through 9, with over 47 local classes participating. The week's activities included the live streaming of discussions with area farmers and tours of local agricultural operations, including dairy, beef, chicken, grain crops, sheep, and fruit. In addition, the teachers received an extensive list of resources which can be used to further teach the students where their food comes from. In, in 2019, Bite of Brant was awarded the Farm and Food Care Champion Award, recognizing their support for Ontario's farming community. I extend my appreciation to the many involved in the organization of this year's event and their continued focus on the value of Ontario food and farmers. Thank you. Thank you. Member Statements. Member for Brampton East. Thank you, Speaker. Dump truck drivers are essential workers in our province, but the Conservative government is threatening their very livelihood. Drivers of triaxle dump trucks have explained how changes in what is known as the SPIF regulations is forcing dump truck drivers to make huge investments in buying new equipment and new retrofits for their trucks in a very short amount of time. And they've explained to me that many dump truck drivers may not be able to afford this new investment, and they may actually have to pull their trucks off the road. That is why the NDP is calling on the Conservative government to stand up for dump truck, dump truck drivers. The Conservative government must stand up for dump truck drivers, bring in reasonable, safe accommodations so that these dr drivers can continue to contribute to our province. Small businesses are struggling right now at no fault of their own. Businesses that were incredibly successful before COVID-19 are now struggling to make ends meet. And the Conservative government has not only abandoned small businesses, but they're refusing to make further investment to ensure that they survive this pandemic. The Conservative government didn't listen to the experts and they walked us right into this pandemic. But the Conservative government now should have brought in additional financial support to small businesses during this most recent lockdown. Instead, they are leaving small businesses out to dry. That's why the NDP is calling on the Conservative government to act now, invest in small businesses, and make sure they have the support that they need to get through this pandemic. Thank you, Speaker. Thank you. Member Statements. The member for Perry Sound, Muskoka. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Perry Sound, Muskoka is home to thousands of tourism businesses, small and large. As we know, all tourism, as we all know, tourism is one of the hardest hit sectors by the pandemic, and I've been advocating for help for these businesses. I was pleased to see our government act to support this important part of our economy in the recent budget. Our government has, has allocated $100 million for the new Ontario Tourism and Hospital, Hospitality Small Business Support Grant to help those tourism businesses that were not eligible for the Ontario Small Business Grant. This will include hotels and motels, hunting and fishing camps, and children's overnight camps. I look forward to seeing applications for this grant program open soon. Ontario has allocated another $100 million for larger tourism businesses that are the anchors for the local tourism economies. As well, our government has set aside $150 million for the staycation tax credit to encourage people to support Ontario tourism businesses as soon as, as it is safe to do so. We are increasing funding to Ontario's regional tourism organizations like Explorer's Edge by $15 million. We are also supporting resource-based tourism businesses like hunting camps by waiving some licenses and crown land fees. And Mr. Speaker, the Minister of Finance is gonna join me with local chambers of commerce in Perry Sound, Muskoka to go over these and other things. And I thank him for that. Thank you. Thank you. Member Statements. The member for Whitby. Thank you, Speaker. The Ontario government is investing $2.9 million through the Inclusive Community Grants Program to support community projects that will keep people of all ages and abilities healthy and engaged across the province. In my riding, the town of Whitby is receiving $60,000 to facilitate the evaluation of its age-friendly action plan and expansion of social exclusion programs. Speaker, this new funding will help town staff and council to continue to create opportunities for seniors and people with disabilities connect socially from home, something that is of critical importance right now during the pandemic. In addition, Speaker, the region of Durham has received funding to develop a series of learning and public education opportunities and increasing accessibility of public transit 
for older adults and persons with disab disabilities. Speaker, through the Inclusive Community Grants Program, we're taking steps to ensure that municipalities like the town of Whitby and the region of Durham and local organizations are able to make our communities more inclusive and accessible. Speaker, it's a great example of what we can achieve when we work together. Thank you very much. Government House Leader on a point of order. Uh, thank you very much, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, if you seek it, you will find unanimous consent for a moment of silence in remembrance of His Royal Highness, the Prince Philip, Duke of Edinburgh. Government House Leader is seeking unanimous consent of the House for a moment's silence in remembrance of His Royal Highness, the Prince Philip, Duke of Edinburgh. Agreed? Agreed. Agreed. Members will please rise. And may God save the Queen. Members, please take your seats. I would like all members to notice that on the south wall of the chamber behind me, the Franco-Ontarian flag has been added next to those of Ontario, Canada, and our Legislative Assembly. I'd like all members to notice that on the south wall of the chamber behind me, the Franco-Ontarian flag has been added next to those of Ontario, Canada, and our Legislative Assembly. The President After agreement in this House last month, the decision was made to install the flag here as well as on the Legislature's grounds. After agreement in this House last month, the decision was made to install the flag here as well as on the legislature's grounds. The Drapeau Franco The Franco Ontarian flag is now an official symbol of our province and one that represents our vibrant Franco Ontarian community. The Franco Ontarian flag is now an official symbol of our province and one that represents our vibrant Franco Ontarian community. Just sweet. I am sure you are pleased as I am to see it here as we celebrate and recognize this new and important provincial emblem. I'm sure you are as pleased as I am to see them here as we celebrate and recognize this new and important provincial emblem. Merci, 